Our next question, we have time for a couple more, was sent to cornydrivethrough at gmail.com from Chris Sweeney in Glasgow, Scotland. I was reading about the infamous Vince and Nails altercation, where Vince was attacked in his office by Nails while the Berserker watched the door. According to Shane Douglas, Vince no longer has meetings with wrestlers alone, as Shane was going to Vince's office to punch his teeth down his throat, in quotes, (laughs) and the room was full of guys, and it's been that way ever since Nails. What do you know about this? Any info on the whole Nails incident and aftermath? Do you think Vince could handle himself if needed to? Well, Vince couldn't have handled himself against Nails at that particular point, uh, I don't think, because Nails had him by a significant height and a significant weight advantage and also was a lunatic. Um, but no, th- my apologies to Shane, but no, it hasn't been that way. Uh, maybe it, it just, I hesitate to say this, but maybe Vince just didn't think that Shane was worthy of a one-on-one meeting and considering (laughs) most of Vince's thoughts of Shane Douglas, I would think that would probably be closer to the truth than anything else. I've seen Vince have one-on-one meetings with, I was the the nails was what? 91, 92. Uh, I was there. Okay. I was there from 93 to 99 and worked for the company longer, but wasn't watching Vince have meetings. He had tons of one-on-one meetings. Sometimes if yeah, the old joke where the guys would wait out in the hallway in a line to talk to Vince was true because everybody at TV knew they, they, that was their chance to talk to Vince. Vince was going to be at TV. They were going to see him there or at Madison square garden. And it was hard to get Vince's attention at the garden. So that was the rib. Um, after the production meeting, Vince would go to his office and there would be a line of wrestlers standing waiting to, to get some time with him, however much time that might be. What one of the recently departed said he wasn't going to spend three hours standing in a hallway to talk to, you know, Vince McMahon, right? But that's the way the guys got to talk to him. If Vince was in the middle of something and somebody knocked on the door and he Vince had Jerry Briscoe or Pat Patterson or Jim Ross or Bruce Pritchard or whoever the fuck was in there, if it was somebody that was only going to pitch something or that Vince was going to give a few minutes of his time to out of courtesy and mostly nothing else, then those people were not going to leave that room because they were involved in something that was ongoing. If it was a top guy, Undertaker, Bret Hart, Steve Austin, I could go on that this conversation was either going to be a little more challenging or a little more meaningful or a little longer or whatever, or a little more sensitive, then Vince would tell whoever, give me some time. And he would sit and talk with that person, or he might keep Jim Ross or Jerry Briscoe or Pat Patterson. If they were germane to the topic of the conversation, such as the pay-per-view finish or the contract, JR's and talent relations or the fucking agent of this thing we're going to do on TV or whatever. But no, there was never any statement made, word out, rule instituted, or a scuttlebutt amongst all of us that, no, we're not allowed to leave Vince alone with any of the talent anymore. That's ridiculous. And be quite honest, let's see, 25 years ago, I'm, I'm, if I was Jackie Fargo, I'd say Shane... Douglas versus Vince McMahon, six to five, you pick it. I see everyone always acts like Vince is Mr. Tough Guy and Vince could have handled himself with all the boys. Where, no, I'm no, I didn't say, all, I, I didn't say all the boys. I'm saying <laughs> Vince was bigger, Vince was heavier, Vince was jacked up, and fucking Shane may have been madder, but I got I'd like to have seen that. I because I'm I'm sorry, but I wasn't aware that Shane Douglas was a member of the Gracie family. That's a good point. That's a good point. You know, so, you know, I mean, I did Barry Horowitz versus Vince. I'd have like six to five on that one, too. This was 25 years ago. Vince was in his late 40s and fucking Jack to the gills. So, you know, I'm but now. Jack doesn't mean you could throw a punch and Jack doesn't mean you could take a punch. Well, no, and, and neither does it being a mad fucking pro wrestler from Pittsburgh. <laughs> it mean you can do either one of those things either. I'm just. Say it, it's not like if it had been Steve Blackman going in, I'd say we need to call some people to help Vince out. Our next question 
sent to corny drive through at gmail.com. That and, and, and that's not being disrespectful to Shane as a pro wrestler either. Cause I have a feeling that unless that Ricky Morton particularly got a finger in his fucking eye socket that Vince could have probably taken Ricky in a shoot also having fucking at six or seven inches and fucking 40 or 50 pounds on him. But you know, but that uh, nevertheless, <laughs>